Hello again. Today we're going to read, or I'm going to read, and hopefully you're going to listen to Chapter 5 of The House at Pooh Corner by A. A. Milne with fabulous illustrations by E. H. Shepherd. Uh, chapter 5 is called In Which Rabbit Has a Busy Day, and we learn what Christopher Robin does in the mornings. It was going to be one of Rabbit's busy days. As soon as he woke up, he felt important, as if everything depended on him. It was just the day for organising something, or for writing a notice signed Rabbit, or for seeing what everybody else thought about it. It was a perfect morning for hurrying around to Pooh and saying, Very well then, I'll tell Piglet, and then going to Piglet and saying, Pooh thinks! But perhaps I'd better see Owl first. It was a captainish sort of day when everybody said yes, Rabbit, and no, Rabbit, and waited until he had told them. He came out of his house and sniffed the warm spring morning as he wondered what he could do. There he is, sniffing the warm spring morning. Kanga's house was nearest, and at Kanga's house was Roo, who said, Yes, Rabbit, and No, Rabbit, almost better than anybody else in the forest. But there was another animal there nowadays, the strange and bouncy Tigger. And he was the sort of Tigger who was always in front when you were showing him the way anywhere, and was generally out of sight when at last you came to the place and said proudly, Here we are. No. Not Kangas, said Rabbit thoughtfully to himself as he curled his whiskers in the sun, and to make quite sure that he wasn't going there, he turned to the left and trotted off in the other direction, which was the way to Christopher Robin's house. After all, said Rabbit to himself, Christopher Robin depends on me. He's fond of Pooh and Piglet and Eeyore, and so am I, but they haven't any brain, not to notice. And he respects Owl, because you can't help respecting anybody who can spell Tuesday, even if he doesn't spell it right. But spelling isn't everything. There are days when spelling Tuesday simply doesn't count. And Kanga is too busy looking after Roo, and Roo is too young, and Tigger's too bouncy to be of any help. So there's really nobody but me when you come to look at it. I'll go and see if there's anything he wants doing, and then I'll do it for him. It's just the day for doing things. He trotted along happily, and by the by, he crossed the stream and came to the place where his friends and relations lived. There seemed to be even more of them than usual this morning, and having nodded to a hedgehog or two with whom he was too busy to shake hands, and having said, Good morning, good morning, importantly to some of the others, and ah, there you are, kindly to the smaller ones. He waved a paw at them over his shoulder and was gone, leaving such an air of excitement and I don't know what behind him that several members of the Beetle family, including Henry Rush, made their way at once to the Hundred Acre Wood and began climbing trees in the hope of getting to the top before it happened, whatever it was, so that they might see it properly. Rabbit hurried on by the edge of the Hundred Acre Wood, feeling more important every minute, and soon he came to the tree where Christopher Robin lived. He knocked at the door. He called out once or twice, and then walked back a little way and put his paw up to keep the sun out and called to the top of the tree. And then he turned all around and shouted, Hello! And I say, it's Rabbit! But nothing happened. Then he stopped and listened. And everything stopped and listened with him. and the forest was very lone and still and peaceful in the sunshine. 
until suddenly, a hundred miles above him, a lark began to sing. Bother, said Rabbit. He's gone out. He went back to the green front door just to make sure, and he was turning away, feeling that his morning had got all spoiled, when he saw a piece of paper on the ground, and there was a pin in it, as if it had fallen to the floor, off the door. Ha! said Rabbit, feeling quite happy again. Another notice! This is what it said. Gone out. Baxon. Busy. Baxon. C-R. Ha! said Rabbit again. I must tell the others. And he hurried off importantly. The nearest house was Owl's, and to Owl's house in the Hundred Acre Wood he made his way. He came to Owl's door, and he knocked and he rang and he rang and he knocked, and at last Owl's head came out and said, Go away, I'm thinking, oh, it's you, which was how he always began. Owl! said Rabbit shortly. You and I have brains. The others have fluff. If there's any thinking to be done in this forest, and when, when I say thinking, I mean thinking, you and I must do it. Yes, said Owl. I was. Read that. Owl took Christopher Robin's notice from Rabbit and looked at it nervously. He could spell his own name, Wall. And he could spell Tuesday, so that you knew it wasn't Wednesday. And he could read quite comfortably, when you weren't looking over his shoulder and saying, Well, all the time. And he could, Well, said Rabbit. Yes, said Al, looking wise and thoughtful. I see what you mean, undoubtedly. Well, exactly, said Al. Precisely. And he added, after a little thought. If you had not come to me, I should have come to you. There are Owl and Rabbit at Owl's house. Why? asked Rabbit. For that very reason, said Owl hoping that something helpful would happen soon. Yesterday morning, said Rabbit solemnly, I went to see Christopher Robin. He was out. Pinned on his door was a notice. The same notice. A different one, but the meaning was the same. It's, it's very odd. Amazing, said Owl, looking at the notice again and getting, just for a moment, a curious sort of feeling that Something had happened to Christopher Robin's back. What did you do? Nothing. The best thing, said Owl wisely. Well, said Rabbit again, as Owl knew he was going to. Exactly, said Owl. For a little while he couldn't think of anything more, and then all of a sudden he had an idea. Tell me, Rabbit said, the exact words of the first notice. This is very important. Everything depends on this. The exact words of the first notice. It was the same as that one, really. Owl looked at him and wondered whether to push him off the tree. But, feeling that he could always do it afterwards, he tried once more to find out what they were talking about. The exact words, please, he said, as if Rabbit hadn't spoken. It just said, gone out, Baxon. Same as this, only this says, busy Baxon, too. Owl gave a great sigh of relief. Ah, oh, said Owl, now we know where we are. Yes, but where's Christopher Robin, said Rabbit. That's the point. Al looked at the notice again. To one of his education, the reading of it was easy. Gone out, Baxon, busy, Baxon, just the sort of thing you'd expect to see on a notice. 
It is quite clear what has happened, my dear rabbit, he said. Christopher Robin has gone out somewhere with Baxon. He and Baxon are busy together. Have you seen a Baxon anywhere about in the forest lately? I don't know, said Rabbit. That's what I came to ask you. What are they like? Well, said Owl. The spotted or herbaceous Baxon is just a... At least, he said, it's, it's really more of a... Of course, he said, it, it depends on the... Well, said Owl. The fact is, he said, I don't know what they're like said Owl, frankly. Thank you, said Rabbit, and he hurried off to see Pooh. And that's the end of part one.